Hello there, coming to you from my basement again. One more division strategy before I before we shut this division train down. I have one more division strategy. That strategy is called repeated subtraction. I have two other division videos on my channel. One is just basic division principles and properties, why we divide, how to divide, and the other is the distributive property. And so go check those out. Before you do that, check out this strategy because parents, this strategy is probably gonna be pretty different from what we learned as kids, but for your student, it's going to be very helpful. So give it a shot. Let's see, let's figure this out together and work on it with, with each other. 496 divided by eight. This is the same problem that I used on my div distributed property um, strategy that hopefully that'll help you see two different ways to do this. So the first thing we do is list our multiples. 8, 16, 24, no, yeah, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, 80. First thing you need to do is list your multiples. That is going, I call, for my students, we call that our tower of strength, our safety net of information. That is going to give you all the information you need to make an educated decision about what numbers you're going to choose when you are subtracting. So what we could do, we could take away eight here and we would have to borrow to make this work and we would get 488. How many groups of eight is eight? If you have eight items in a group and eight items is all you have, how many groups is that? That's one group of eight. That's one group of eight. We could do this all day. Take away eight, that's incorrect. 8 minus 8, oh, 8 minus 8 is 0, 8 minus nothing is 8, 4 minus nothing is 4. Here's another one group of 8. We could do that all day, but now look and see what we have here. Now we have 480. If we go to our list of information, what do you notice here? Ding, 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 ding. We have a 48. Now, 48's not really going to help us because if we subtract 48, we're still going to have to borrow. That's only going to get us down to 442 or so, right? And so that's not going to help us. But what happens if we add a zero here? Just like in multiplication, when you replace zeros and then you do your work and then you put them back or you cover them up, do your work and then put them back, you can do the same thing in division. You can just add a zero onto the end of a number. If we take that, then we're down to zero. Now, how many groups is that? One, two, three, four, five, six groups of eight. That's what our list is, but we added that zero there. So if you add that zero here, in my classroom, we call this 60 Gs, 60 groups. That's 60 groups of eight right here. What are these numbers called? These numbers are called partial quotients. And so what do we do with partial quotients? Same thing you do with partial products, you add them. 60 plus one plus one, your quotient is 62. This is how you divide using repeated subtraction. You use your numbers in your list, add zeros where you need to, and then add them into add the zero into your groups as well. That's how you get your quotient. Let's try another one just to be sure because in the fourth grade, your goal, your teacher's objective, the goal of your teacher is to get you to be able to divide four digit dividends divided by a single digit divisor to get your answer with and without remainders. That's our driving, that's where we're, that's our destination, that's where we're headed. So let's go ahead and go there. 5,697 divided by six. First thing we do every single time, list multiples. I strongly suggest, I beg, I ask with all kindness that you list multiples. I promise it'll help. Here we go. 56, 63. That's not right. That's not right at all. 49, 54, 60. There we go. Sorry about that. So when you have a large number like this, you need to subtract a large number. The reason for that is the more times you subtract, 
the more times you give yourself an opportunity to make a mistake. So we want to subtract as large a number as possible so that we don't make a mistake. 56, five, six, nine, we're looking for, we, we're look, we could do 60, but that's higher. So that's not going to work because you can add two zeros. You can add one zero, you can add two zeros. If we did that in the ninth slot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's going to give us 5,400. That is a good number to subtract. It's easy to subtract. I don't have to do any borrowing or carrying. I don't have to do any hard subtraction. It's all easy subtraction. And now I know that that's the ninth slot, but I added two zeros. This is 900 groups of six. 900. Now I'm going to subtract again. I'm doing repeated subtraction. I'm going to subtract again. So I'm not going to use the 54, right? Because that's, if I added a zero, that'd be 540. And that doesn't make sense. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to, I can't use the 30 because if I added a zero here, that'd be 300. And if I have 297 items, I can't take 300 items away. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pick this 24. 240. Seven and nine. How many groups of six is 240? One, two, three, four. I'm in, whoopsie daisy. I'm in the fourth slot and I have added one zero. I have 40 G's right here, 40 groups, right? Okay, now 97. What number can I use to subtract 97? Well, I'm going to go with 60 because it's the biggest number I have. There's nothing here I can add a zero to. So that's a seven. That's a three. The 60 is in the 10th slot. That's 10 groups of six. Now here I am at 37. What? I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, yeah. See what I mean? I'm so happy that this happened. See what I mean? I know that I've made a mistake because I have an answer key and I'm a teacher and it's how this works. But you're not, and every time you subtract, you have the chance to make these silly mistakes. Look here, nine minus four is not nine. Nine minus four is five. So I can't use this 60. You see what I'm saying? You see how easy it is to make a mistake? You can't use that 60 now. I've made a mistake here. You have to be so careful about your subtraction. You have to be so careful about making sure you're writing down the right thing. So here I'm at 57, where I was supposed to be. Looking down my list, I'm going to choose the 54 because that's closest to 57 without going over. It's in the ninth slot. That's 9 G's. 7 minus 4 is 3. Now, now I have a 3. I need to take 3. Because my goal is to get this number to zero. That's that's the ultimate goal, but it's not always going to happen. When it doesn't happen, that's when you have a remainder. Can I take six away from three? No. That means this number is my remainder. So I'm just going to hold on to that remainder down there until I add up my partial quotients and find out what my answer is. 949. 949 with a remainder of three. Circle your answer. Always circle your answer. This is how you find division. This is how you figure out division using this repeated subtraction strategy. I hope this helps you. If you thought that this was more confusing than the, or this was hard, you didn't like this, you're like, this doesn't make sense, the list, the zeros, I don't know. Go back on my channel, find the distributed property, and see if that helps you better. And um, this is a great strategy for fourth graders. And... I hope that this helps you and that this will help you have success using division um, in the fourth grade.